Hey YouTube, have you ever wondered where babies come from? Me too. So last week we had Los in the studio and we talked about the cascading nature of style sheets. Uh, that was one of my favorite episodes we recorded so far. I hope you liked it. If you haven't watched it, I recommend going back in time and viewing it last Monday. Good luck with that. Also, in case you missed it, I uploaded a blooper reel from that video. We had a lot of fun time around here, and I guess I just wanted to prove it. Check that out. So this week I want to go a little bit more crazy on CSS and talk about a super important idea called selectors. Selectors are used in CSS to identify specific HTML elements in order to give them the styling that they need. So let's say we have two little happy buttons here. One is a cancel button and one is a submit button. Now we need some way to tell CSS that we want to style the submit button to make it look a little bit more exciting. So here's what we do. In our HTML document, we can add some special attributes. You remember attributes, right? Those are those special key value pairs that we talked about in part four of our HTML5 series. If you can't really remember that, I recommend going back right now and refreshing yourselves. Don't worry, we'll wait. I think they're gone. The first of these special attributes is called an ID, and it looks like this. The second of these special attributes is called a class, and it looks like this. Okay, so let's talk about the differences between these two special attributes. Starting with IDs, each web page can have only one element with any given ID, and only one ID can be given to any specific element. Now classes are a lot more forgiving. You can have multiple elements with the same class on any given page, and you can even have multiple classes on one specific element. I'm throwing a link down below to a great article on the subject on CSSTricks.com. Make sure to check that out. It makes everything really clear. It's not too complicated. Great! Now that we've applied these attributes, we can use them to select our HTML elements. In our style sheet, we select the ID by using a little pound sign and the name of the ID, like so. Pound button means find that one element whose ID's name is button. For a class, we use a dot followed by the name of the class, like so. Dot button. Now this means find all of the elements who have a class name of button. And a final way of selecting an HTML element is just by using the tag name with no special characters in front of it, like so. This says find all of the anchor tags. This element does not require that tag to have a class or an ID, like duh. Okay, so here's an entire style so that you can see the selector in context with the rest of the style. Here we are selecting all the elements that have a class of button and making their backgrounds blue and their font size 18 pixels. Easy enough, huh? Cool. Well, this is just an introduction to selectors. They can get very, very complicated and very, very, very useful and complex and maybe beautiful. Depends on who you're talking to. Next week, we're gonna take a look at the parts of a style declaration that make things pretty. These are called properties and values. Okay, that's it. Remember to subscribe and share. Dev tips out. Wee 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 w